Hi guys, and welcome back to our FIFA 22 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. Now, this is set to be a very, very busy and exciting episode because, of course, we are beginning the new season in the Championship. We've, of course, just been promoted. We have transfers to make, and in terms of transfers, of course, you guys have made some amazing suggestions. So I do apologise for those who might have suggested a player and I don't go for them or what have you. There were just so many, so many players that were suggested. Some of them I liked, some of them I, some of them I didn't like, or, for example, some of you guys may have suggested a player that was too expensive or expensive for the amount of work I wanted to do, you know, because if we have a look at the transfer budget, we have 9.12 million. And, you know, if one of you guys suggested someone or a player who maybe we could afford for five, six, seven million, that's all well and good, but we need a good handful of players and revamp this squad for the championship and that would leave us with barely anything left. But what I have done, I have written down a bit of a plan. I've got a little sheet here on, a, well, a notebook, a notepad. And uh, I've written down a plan filled with your guys' suggestions. And I've got sort of different reasonings behind each one. So firstly, let's have a look at the squad. So this is our first team squad here. That's our first team squad. And that is our second. That's using every single player we've got within our squad um, at the moment. So I did say I need a second goalkeeper. I need a second goalkeeper. A lot of you guys suggested free agents as well. And uh, <laughs> I know why, because it is so OP. There were so many very, very good free agents. Some of them would have been a bit too unrealistic for my liking, so I've, left, I've decided not to go for him. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to, I could have stacked this team, let me tell you. I could have stacked this team with free agents. But that doesn't mean we're not going to be using them. You guys did suggest them, so I think there are maybe two or three free agents we will be going for to help us out. Um, but I wanted, of course, we need a couple of wingers, absolutely, because we only have Taylor and Diamond. We have Hawks as well. And uh, some of you guys have suggested to maybe start using Diamond and Hawks now they've come back from loan. But I just think in the championship, you know, we've got Gooch on one side, Diaco on the other. The drop is far too significant. It really is far too significant for the, for the championship anyway, for my liking. Um, and I want it to be a really, really competitive squad where we've got slightly similar ratings or... We've got someone, for example, like a Diaku, 75 rated, then maybe bring someone in who's rated like 69, something like that, who's just behind him a little bit, if that makes sense. So I want it to be a really competitive, strong squad with a mixture of sort of mainly youth, I guess, because that's what Sunderland do in real life, and a little bit of sort of further experience in the sort of mid to late 20s. That's exactly what I'm going to go for. So without further ado, we will be going into our transfer business, but just before we do that, before I forget, we need to go on to this and change it to legendary. So uh, you guys can stop moaning now. <laughs> Obviously not all of you, but some of you just hated the fact that it was on world class. But it has been ups now and uh, no doubt we are going to get battered. So this episode, we're going to do all of our transfer business and then play the first game of the season and then that will be the episode. It might sound like that's quite short, but if you see the amount of transfer business I want to get through, then you'll understand this could be a potentially very, very heavy episode. So firstly, we need a second goalkeeper, and my God, have we found a perfect replacement. Only 22 years of age, he is the former Bayern Munich third choice. Of course, Hoffman as well was the Bayern Munich fourth choice, and he's six foot four. he's German. He used to play with Hoffman, which is absolutely mad. So just imagine, we've now basically got, if we do get him, we will have... Bayern Munich's third and fourth choice goalkeepers as our first and second, which I just thought to myself, you know, there was a couple of experienced keepers to go for, but I just thought this was just too perfect. It was far too perfect to uh, to not go for. In last FIFA, Frustel did have an absolutely ridiculous potential of like 90 odd. In this FIFA, I don't think it's any way near as, um, as high. I think it's only sort of like 70s, but still, it's just so perfect, isn't it? Two Germans. Both six foot four, leading our first and second team and battling it out. So it's it's ideal, really. So we're going to try and get Christian Fruschel. He wants a rotation role, which is absolutely perfect. He won't be complaining. He can have a five-year deal, because then we have... It, it, like I say, it's just perfect. We have absolutely perfect competition in goal. We'll offer him seven grand. Is that enough? Yes, he's happy with that. So first signing of this window is an absolutely brilliant second goalkeeper in Christian Fruschel. 68 rated. Only three ratings behind. Uh, Hoffman and it's happy to be a rotation role which is quite rare usually even if they're just a couple of ratings below they want to be important um, so I'm really really happy with that that's a perfect start of course ignore Stuart and Dole because we sorted those out in the last episode but our first signing is Christian Frustel so this is what I'm going to keep doing I'm going to keep updating you with how the first and second string lineups look like so now Frustel will be there going in the second string absolutely Perfect start. And we do have some other free agents in there. You know, we've got De Chilio, who would be absolutely ideal, but I really, really don't feel like we need full-backs. Barley Mumba as well, someone we could potentially go for later on down the line, but again, we don't need full-backs 
He's a former Sunderland man. I like that outlook. A lot of you guys were going for former Sunderland lads, particularly the youngsters and the youth players that we let go whilst Stuart Donald was at the helm, which was very frustrating. And we will be looking at one later on, so don't you worry about that. But for now, I'm going to leave Barley Mumba because I feel like I've got other ideas um, in mind. But for now, we're going to steer away from free agents and what have you. But here is a former Sunderland loanee, Dion Sanderson, who was absolutely class on his loan spell, or during his loan spell for Sunderland. And quite a few of you guys have been suggesting him over the last few episodes. And I'm definitely, definitely going to go for him. Absolutely. We'll start off with a 1.65 offer. He's gone for 1.95, which isn't too bad. Um, 1.75. What do you think about that, lad? What do you think about... 1.9. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. I'll just be cheeky. Save us 50k. Go on, take it. 1.85 for Deion Sanderson and a selling clause. That's fine, mate. There we go. Deion Sanderson. That's a brilliant start, that, you know. In my notes, like I say, I've made a few notes down here. I've made notes about how much players are worth and done a little bit of uh, scouting about. So uh, we've actually done quite well there, <laughs> let me tell you. Squad role is going to be important, you would think. Absolutely. He'll be sitting alongside Doyle, Doyle and Sanderson in the middle as a centre-back pairing. And they're relatively young as well. He wants a four-year deal. I'll change that to a five. But you're having those two together. That's absolutely mad. It really is mad. He doesn't want a release clause, which is perfect. Now, what does he want? He's only 68 rated. It's so a 17.5k. He's very high. But that's only because he plays for a Premier League side. So I'm going to try and get the down just a little bit. I say a little bit. I don't want to go down too far. I'll offer 11k, which is actually quite a lot for that rating. Okay, he's happy with that. But I am going to get rid of the bonus. And see if he'll take that. He wants 12k. Absolutely, we'll take it. Our second signing of the summer is Dion Sanderson. Get in, lad. There he is. 68 rated Dion Sanderson. Of course, he can play centre back or right back as well. So, very versatile. And I think a very good and realistic signing. Because he loved it at Sunderland. He loved it. It's just a shame we didn't go up. Because I think he probably would have come back to us if uh, we went up the season that he was on loan. And he will slip straight into this side here alongside Callum Doyle. I think that's class. And then I'll stick Flanagan. Into the um, into the second string alongside Willis, which is a little bit harsh. But, of course, we are trying to improve here. We're trying to significantly improve so we can compete in the championship. And next on the list, it is a striker. I said I did want a young striker to play behind uh, to play behind Ross Stewart. And there's a good few of them. You've got uh, Scarlett there. You've got this Adamu, who quite a few of you guys did actually suggest. But he's worth quite a lot between 4.2 and 6.2 million, which is... You know, we could probably do it, but then it just really ruins the rest of the plans, really. And uh, it would be a mad signing, it really would, but we're not going to go for it. Of course, we have the former, well, we do have this other channel hero, Troy Parrott, we could potentially go for Liam Delap, absolutely as well. Greenwood, I'll just let you know now, I think we might go for him later on in the episode. But for now, the one that I'm liking the look of the most is this lad here from Spurs, Dane Scarlett is currently only rated 66, but a really young lad. He's never going to get into that Spurs side in a million years whilst lots of Kane and Son are there. So I just think it'd be a nice little sign and bring him down to the championship and hopefully we can improve him massively and get him firing uh, and firing us to the Premier League. I'm going to be really, really cheeky. I'm going to go for 1.4 million. What do you think, lad? What do you think? 1.7 is gone for. I'll go for 1.5. Will you take that? 1.5. Come on. 1.7 again. Ah, uh, we have to go for 1.6, which is a little bit more than I wanted to. 1.6, he'll take it, but I think in the end he will be worth it. Good player, Dane Scarlett. Good young player as well with bags and bags of potential. Just what we need. He wants a rotation squad role, which is perfect. Five-year deal, again, that's absolutely perfect. No release clause. He's already offering his own wage, which I like. I love it when players just say, this is what I want, because then we can play with it rather than a guessing game. 4.8k, I've got rid of the bonus. And he's happy with it. 4.8k. And that is another signing through the door. And what a signing it is as well. Dane Scarlett, just 18 years of age. English, 66 rated. And he will only get better, I'm sure. So there is Scarlett sitting in the second string for the time being. And next up, we are going for another striker. But I do want to be using him as a winger. Because then we'd have Gooch, we'd have Diaku. And here is Jamal Lowe. Rated 70, 27 years of age. And I just think if we move him uh, or make his position on the left wing, then we would have Gooch and Diaku uh, fighting for the right. Then we'll get Jamal Lowe to go for the left. And then, of course, we are going to pick up another winger later on. So just, we just have loads of competition on the wings, basically. Because at the minute, we only really have Diaku and Gooch of championship quality. So we're going to go for Jamal Lowe. Well, first we'll be cheeky and just offer a flat-out 1 million. See what they say to that. He wants Jack Diamond. 
Ooh, that's a difficult one. Oh, that is a difficult one. Because like I say, I like Jack Diamond, but is he good enough? I don't think he is. I mean, if it helps the transfer, I might try and push the transfer sum down a little bit more to like 500k. And then I think that could be a very good deal. I do think it could be. 620. I'll push it to 550. See what they say to that. Because I think this is a bit of a bargain, really. 550 and Jack Diamond. They'll take it. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic deal for me. I know a lot of you guys, as I say, are a big fan of Jack Diamond, as am I. But it is such a, for me, just screams League One player. And we really need to bump it up, bump up the quality if we want to compete in this league. So it'd be nice to maybe go for a sort of a playoff position this year. Potentially, anyway. It's probably a bit of a push. But we'll see. He wants a three year deal and an important squad role. He doesn't want a release clause. How much money do you want, lad? How much money do you want? Oh, it's rated 70. 17.5k. Oh, this could be risky, this. It could be risky. 13k. How's about that, lad? How's about that? He's happy with it. 13k for Jamal Lowe. I probably overpaid him there. But Jamal Lowe, like I say, plays a striker if needs be. But I am going to put him on a development plan to change to a left winger because that's just something we desperately, desperately need. So as you can see, it's shaping up a little bit there. Jamal Lowe on the left-hand side. Diaku on the right as well. And in the second squad, I'm going to put Gooch on the left-hand side there, replacing Ellis Taylor. Well, I'm going to put him on the right-hand side, should I say. And then we are going to be bringing in another left winger on a free transfer, which we'll go to now, actually. So another left winger that was actually suggested and just happens to be a free agent is this man here, Brandon Barker. 25 years of age, he's a winger. He's formerly of Manchester City and I think it's uh, Rangers as well, Brandon Barker. Four-star weak foot, three-star skill moves, 5'11", so he's not tiny, and he's absolutely rapid. Look at that. 9 to 1 acceleration, 9 to 1 sprint speed, and at 69 rated, it, it kind of fits the bill, doesn't it? Kind of just under the likes of Jamal Lowe, Gooch as well. So we've got four wingers there, all competing at a very, very decent championship level. So I'm going to go for him and try and sign him. He wants an important squad role, which isn't ideal because he will be getting rotated quite a lot. He wants a three-year deal. I'll stick him on a four for the time being just to be safe. Uh, we don't want a release clause. He does want a release clause, but I'm going to deny it. Not happening. I hate release clauses. Really don't like him at all. Uh, recommended wage is 8.7k. I'll offer seven just because I'm a cheapskate. 7k. How would you like that, son? 7.7. I'll just accept it. Yeah, I'll just accept it. So that is Brandon Barker through the door. It is another winger, just as we needed. So our wingers and uh, on the wings in general, we're looking very, very good right now. As you can see, first team squad, we've got Loa on one side, Diaku on the other. And uh, in the second stream, we've got Barker on one side and Gooch on the other. So, you know, regardless of when, when we need to rotate for fitness reasons, we've always got really good quality in there. That's what I really want to do. That's what I wanted to achieve. But now we have former Sunderland Academy player Sam Greenwood of Leeds United at the moment, of course. He's not getting any game time at Leeds. He's rated 69, 20 years of age, four-star weak foot, two-star skill moves. He's 5'11", so again, he's not tiny. And I would probably play him as a cam. I think it worked very well there. His finishing ability is very high. Free kick accuracy as well. Curve 72. Ball control 74. I think he would probably replace, for me, he'd probably replace Pritchard. I would probably put Sam Greenwood in the first team and put Embleton in the second. But between Embleton and Pritchard, I would probably want to keep our own, which of course is uh, Elliot Embleton. He's younger as well. He's an academy lad. So I want to keep him. Um... And I think he can do a job in the Championship, Pembleton, as well. So if I do manage to bring in Sam Greenwood, then I might put Pritchard on the transfer list because we, we don't really need three cams. Do you know what I mean? It's worth 2.9. I'll be cheeky. I'll go for 2.1. Just to be cheeky. 2.45. Wow, I thought there was a feel. I had a feeling, sorry, he was going to just gonna walk away there. But we have a bit of negotiations on our hands here. 2.2 .2 for Sam Greenwood. What do you think to that? 2.45 is sticking there, isn't he? He's sticking. Go on, 2.3. 2.3, what are you saying? What are you saying? 2.3 for Sam Greenwood. I will take that every day of the week. Hope you guys are enjoying this, by the way, because this is absolutely brilliant. We're flying. We're absolutely flying, and we're not done yet. We are not done yet, boys and girls. Important squad roll for Sam Greenwood. That's fine. Five-year deal. Please, sir, sign it. He has done. He's happy with it. No release clause. Brilliant. Now, your wage, that's fine. I'm glad that he said it, because I didn't want to pay him 21.5k a week. Now, we need to try and... Ease this down a little bit. Will you take that? Oh, God, this is hard. Don't really have enough uh, to play with too much. Will you take that? Oh, no. We're just out of pocket by 1.6k. If I take away all the bonus and chuck it all in there, 15k, what do you think to that? Will you take that? 
Oh, 702 quid out. Come on, man. We really don't have any room for any negotiations here like, at all. This is really frustrating. I'm playing around with it. There's very little movement. Come on, lad. Just take the deal. Oh, I think he's going to take it. He's took it. 15k bang on. Jesus Christ. I thought everything was going to go down the drain there. But we have got our man, Sam Greenwood. Rec Sorry, returns. Not returns. He returns to Sunderland. Looking in the centre forward, 69 years of age. He's got a play face as well, which is great. He plays a cam or a central midfielder. But I think I am going to adjust his uh, position in the development um, plan to a cam. That'd help a lot. So as you can see now, look at that. That looks absolutely brilliant for our first team at the moment. Hoffman and goal, Sirkin, Doyle, Sanderson, Huggins, 09, and Neil in the middle with Greenwood as the cam. Diaco on the right, Lowe on the left, and Stewart up top. I just think that looks really, really good. And if you look at the second string as well, it is really nice with Barker, Scala, Embo and Gooch. That's such a good little uh, sort of diamond there up at the top. Of course, Gunnarsson and Evans. We've got Winchester as well who can play in the middle. But for me, Gunnarsson and Evans need to go. Um, or I might even try and use Gunnarsson as a sort of make weight with another deal somewhere along the lines. There's still another couple of signs I want to do, but it all depends on how much money we get from the uh, pre-season tournament. And it, they are both central midfielders, actually. Relatively young central midfielders. One of them we need to pay for. One of them is a free agent. So I'm hoping the free agent doesn't go by the time we potentially get some money. And of course, I do quick sim all of the games in pre-season. So hopefully we just don't get any injuries. That's all I want. We'll quick sim this one and we draw three all O'Brien. Diaku, and Diaku gets another one as well. Three all that finishes there against Tenerife. We have got our transfer offer for Jordan Willis, but that isn't necessary because we want to keep him. And now we are going to be taking on a team I cannot pronounce for the life of me, but we'll be quick summing it. It is our second string squad. Can we get ourselves a win? Come on, lads. Please, lads, it's two all. It's another draw, but Scarlett gets himself a double on his debut for the club, which is very, very nice. And we do have an offer for Corey Evans, one that I am going to accept straight off the bat. That's absolutely fine. We also have one for Flanagan, but I want to keep him around. He was fantastic last season, and even if he isn't the highest-rated centre-back in the in the club, I do like him. We've got an offer for Pritchard as well, funnily enough, from Elche. Uh, 1.6 million, which is a very, very nice amount. And it says there we can get between 1.2 and 1.75. I'm going to accept it. He scored some screamers in League One, don't get me wrong, but he didn't half miss some sitters. And now that we've brought in Greenwood... We don't really need him as much. Now, one central midfielder I did want to bring in, and you might think this is contradictory because I'm pretty sure he's only rated sort of like 63, 64. And, um, of course, Diamond, I'm happy to let him go when he was only rated 62, 63, whatever it was. But this lad is a CDM, and it's just the kind of central midfielders I want. He's six foot four, he's a big lad, and we just don't have that big physical presence in midfield. Um, and he's a young lad, former Brussia Dortmund lad, actually. And he is, of course... Uh, a free agent, so I'm going to go for him. A young lad, really, really strong, which is what I love to see. We'll approach to sign him, and it just gives us backup because there's another lad as well that I want to get who's also of a sort of more physical nature. It's all well and good having, you know, Dan Neal and Luke 9 in there, but none of them are sort of, you know, big brick shit houses, and that's exactly what I want as well. It's fine to have a sporadic squad role, which means he's, of course, only rated very low. I'll give him a five-year deal because he will probably only be playing in bits and pieces anyway, but hopefully he will improve. He only wants 2,000 a week as well. I'll accept that straight off the bat. So there we go. We have signed Kamal Bafounta. I think it's Bafounta. It might be Bafounta, but I'll say Bafounta for the time being. Kamal Bafounta, 63 rated, 20 years of age, French, 6 foot 4, like I say, and a former Dortmund man. So he's got something about the lad. He's got something about him. So I'll stick him in there for the time being in the second string squad. And there is another uh, central midfielder, like I did say, that I've got my eye on. But for now, let's uh, quick sim this game against Rosenborg. Full strength, apart from Ross Stewart, who is currently out on international duty. We'll quick sim it. Can we get ourselves a result here? And we draw again. O'Brien gets the goal for us and uh, Vecchia gets the goal for Rosenborg. And now we're going to be playing a Mulder in the semi-final of the preseason tournament. Again, of course, it's a quick sim game. We'll quick sim that. Can we get a win? Go on, lads, please. And we win. Yes, Grig. Jesus Christ, of all players, gets himself a double. He might be on fire, but he's definitely leaving. He's leaving the fire exit. That was terrible. Don't do that again, Joel. And there is confirmation that Alex Pritchard has been sold to Elche for 1.6 mil. And we will be getting 1.1 million added to our transfer budget. Which means we can go for the other central midfielder I wanted to go for. And as you can see there, by the way, there's some pretty decent looking strikers on the free agents list. But I just don't want to go overboard. I really don't. So Ricky Dembele, I have had my eye on. I won't lie to you. Because we've had him before. We actually had him in the last FIFA um, career mode, I believe. And he did really well in League One and did bits in the Championship. 
So if we have a bit of money left over, I might take him, you know, just as an additional backup uh, up top. And that central midfielder that I'm going to go for is this man here. It was actually suggested on like episode two or three. Raphael Onyedika, a man that I'm definitely very, very interested in. 66 rated, 21 years of age, six foot, but is uh, you know is quick. Acceleration 74, sprint speed 75, strength 80. It's just the absolute ilk of player that I want in the middle of the park. So uh, that'll add a lot of quality to our ranks. I'm going to go for it. Uh, it says between 2.1 and 3.1, but I think I might try and use a player, use a body to exchange here. How about Arbidit Jamali and 900k? How does that suit you? Okay, that well, that's, <laughs> that's absolutely perfect. He just wants a 2% salon course. That is fine. Absolutely perfect for us. We've actually got quite a bit of money left over as well. After this, it's pretty much uh, improvising if we want to do anything else in the transfer market. Because this, I think, was the last player I've got on my list, I believe. I think I've wrote down potentially Bali Mumba. Um, and of course, maybe uh, Dembele as well. Uh, but Onyedika wants a rotation roll, which is perfect. Four-year deal, I'll stick it on a five, just to be safe, as usual. And he wants 3k a week, that's fine. I'll just get rid of the bonus. He might want to bump up his wage. He does to 3.1. We'll accept it, and that is Anya Dika over the line. Two really good, young, central defensive midfielders, which is what I want, just some combatant midfielders in there. And I've just gone straight past him. There he is, Rafael Anya Dika. Get in, son. So that is the first team as of right now, and there is the second team, which I just think... Both sides are so good. Both sides can do a job. They really, really could. I just think they look so good. And look at this already. I've just changed Jamal Lowe's position to a left winger. It took him two weeks to train, and he immediately jumped up from 70 rated to 72 rated. So he's already better than uh, Gooch by two ratings, and he simply jumped up to that because he's uh, trained to be a left winger which is absolutely mad. But we will be quick in this game against Viking FK with our first string squad, of course. Um, it's all bright up top because uh, Stuart is still on international duty. But we'll quick it. Can we finish off with a win? That would be perfect. And we lose on penalties. But as long as there was no injuries, that is absolutely fine. Greenwood missed a penalty in the 27th minute, which is a bit annoying. But still, we've got a decent amount of money to play with still. So we currently have 2.45 million left. And I've just come up with an idea, right? I've come up with an idea. I think I might go for Bali Mumba, which is someone that you guys have suggested so much, and then try and get him and try and convert him to be a central midfielder, and then I will put Bafounta on the loan list, something like that, to make it a bit more realistic. I'm going to approach the sign him and see what happens. This is mad. I did not expect to be doing this. He is not on my list. He isn't on my list, although he was a consideration. We're going to see what we can do anyway. 1.8 million he is worth. They've changed him to a right back. He was never a right back for us, but he's been doing all right for Norwich. He, does, he very, very rarely plays, but they have converted him to a right back. I will offer 1.3 million. Will they be interested in that? 1.9. Uh, how about 1.4 million? How about that? Come on. 1.4. 1.9 still. Come on, man. Give us a bit of leeway here. He wants to come back to his club. It's another academy lad from Sunderland. That's why I love this kind of thought process. 1.6 million, I tell you what, 1.55, <laughs> I'll do that, 1.55 million for Bali Mumba, for the return of young Bali Mumba, and he's agreed to it. You might think I'm overdoing it with uh, players coming back, by the way, of course, with Greenwood and Mumba, but I just think, like I mentioned earlier, it's so good just cleaning up the mess that Stuart Donald made, letting letting go of the likes of Mumba and Greenwood, players like that, it's nice to bring them back. Of course, there were plenty of players that I have seen suggested uh, to be brought back, uh, done, who come along a couple of seasons ago. Uh, they've got uh, Clay, sorry, Clark Salter, who was suggested as well. But those kind of plays I generally think of in a negative manner because Dunn couldn't do the job for us in League One and we're going to the Championship. Clark Salter, he might have done all right elsewhere, but it was an absolute nightmare and he's terrible for us in our worst ever season in the Championship. So I've only got negative memories of him, so I don't really want to bring him back at all. But these kind of players, we didn't want to see go. Do you know what I mean? So, Bolly Mumba, 67 rated, is a right back at the minute. Uh, I'll try and give him a rotation roll. I knew he wouldn't have accepted it. I'll let him have an important one. Four-year deal he wants. Let's have a five. Let's get him back at a long-term deal. Barley Mumba. Release clause. He doesn't want one. That's fine. Absolutely perfect. He only wants 3.9k. That's fine. Again, it's perfect. And it's another return in the transfer window. Look at this. Look at the frigging deals we've done. Barley Mumba as well. I'm going to stick him straight away on the development plan to try and become a central midfielder. Because there's no way he's going to be... Uh, right back at the minute. I don't want him to be a right back. Yeah, it's going to take a while, but I am going to stick him 
as a central midfielder, or at least to train to be a central midfielder. So these are the two sides we've got at the moment. We have uh, Hoffman, Sirkin, Doyle, Sanderson, Huggins, O'Neill, Neil, Greenwood, Diaku, Lowe, Stewart up top, and then second string, it's almost as good. Frustal, uh, Hume, Willis, Flanagan, Key, Onyedika, Mumba, Gooch, Barker, Embleton, and Scarlett. Now you could argue, you know, why is, why is Neil there? and not in the second string. I think in time, he may end up dropping off and we might end up putting Mumba in the first or even dropping on nine and, and put on your Deca in there. You never know, it's just it's just such good competition. It gives me a headache, which is uh, what you want as a manager. But I think the final uh, piece of business we're gonna be doing in this window, I'm gonna try and sign Sir Ricky Dembele on a free. It's something that's been tinkered around in my, in my mind, as you know. Uh, he can play on the left or as a striker, a little bit like Jamal Lowe, but we don't have too many options going up top because I think at some point in the season or some points in the season, I want to go two up top. And if we only have two strikers and we do play two up top in certain uh, times or certain scenarios, if they're going to be exhausted, then we're going to have no strikers to back them up. So Dembele, he wants an important squad role, which is going to be a bit of a nightmare. We've signed quite a few players on an important squad role. I'll give him the three-year deal. He'll probably be about 70 rated. So I'll offer 9k. How's that? 9k. That's a reasonable offer for Sir Ricky Dembele. It's another really, really good sign to be fair. And like I say, the free agents are very much OP. 69 rated. Uh, striker or left midfielder will take that every day of the week. Which leaves us with just under a million left in the bank. And we still have players to be sold as well, which is absolutely crazy. But I think what I'll probably do is start uh, offering players new contracts that aren't going to be happy with the contracts at the moment. Um, you know, once we start getting a little bit money through from uh, from transfers going out. But the time is upon us. It is the first game of the season. We're going to be taking on Sheffield Wednesday in the Championship. And here we go, first game of the season. And this is the team we're going to be going with. Hoffman in goal, Sirkin, Doyle Sanderson making his debut with Huggins at the back as well. O'Neill and Neil will be starting in the middle. That will probably change as the games go on with the likes of Mumba and Anya Dika in there as well. But Founter, if he doesn't find a lone move as well, might find himself a place in the centre of the field. But for now, those two are brilliant in the League One. So I'm going to try again in the Championship. Greenwood making his debut as well as the can behind Ross Stewart with Lowe. Again, it's another debutant on the left-hand side. And Yaku on the right. Let's get into it. And here we are at the stage of light. It's our first steps into the championship in this series. Where will we be going this season? For me, I would like to see us try and get into the playoffs. It is quite optimistic given it's a new difficulty and it's a new league. But to try and maybe scrape a playoff place, that would be absolutely brilliant. I'd absolutely love that. And here we go. New season, new start, new players and lots of them. Can we get off to a win here? Oh, coming down the left-hand side now. It's a good block from Sanderson. Still got the ball, though. Still Sanderson holding him up. Get into him. That's it, Sando. That's it, Sando. Well in. Can he get it away? That'll do. Brilliantly done. Luke 9 now. Spread the play if you can. Neatly done. Go on, Diaku. Make your move as you love to. I can see movement there. In behind. Can Ross Stewart knock it on? He tries to. Striking Greenwood. Oh, it's a save. What a lovely piece of football that was. Knocked into Greenwood, what a goal that would have been on his debut for the club. Oh, get your head in it, get your head in it. That's yours, Dan. That's yours, Dan. Well played. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Diaku. Come on, take him, man. take him, take him, take him. Well in, it's Diaku now. Can he get a good ball in? He tries to get there first. Oh, it's cleared away. Oh, they're going to get rid. They've played really well so far. Get in, well played. Loving this, we're defending so well. I don't want to speak too soon, but we're dealing with it quite well, even on the new difficulty. Oh, come on. Get over to him. Get over to him. It's a good ball in. Get over to him. Sanderson all over the place there. No foul. No foul. No foul. Well played. Get it away. Get it away. That's please get it away. Get it away. Pass the ball, man. Jesus Christ. There we go. Help him. Help him. Help him. There he is. Diaku. Take him. Diaku gets the ball in towards the near post. Cleared away again. We're getting plenty of crosses in. We're just not getting... And he shots away, apart from that Greenwood chance early doors. And there goes the half-time whistle. And to be fair, I feel like we've been miles the better side. They've had a couple of scary moments making their way into our box. But we've been putting plenty of crosses in. That's not quite coming off. And that chance with Greenwood as well, early doors. It would have been so good had that hit the back of the net. So it needs to be a little bit better in front of goal. And I think we might get away with three points here. Oh, come on now. The breaking down left-hand side. It's a great chance for them. Please be offside. It is. Thank God. Shit myself then. Can he spread the play? 
It does, brilliantly so. It's Huggins inside. Greenwood on the edge. From distance, still Greenwood. He strikes Greenwood. It's another save. Greenwood being the only man really making chances for us. I'm going to bring on Dane Scarlett and Bolly Mumba as well. Change things up. Get the ball in. It heads towards Sanderson. Cleared away. Go on, Mumba. Well played. It's Sanderson on the edge. To Greenwood again. He strikes it. What a save. This is just a game between Greenwood and their keeper, I'm telling you. Intercepted again. Neatly done. It is Luke 9 A wide four. Low. Can he drive at them? He's got the pace. He's got the dribbling ability. It is low. Can he switch the plate? Neatly done there. Go on. Move, move, move the IQ. There we go. Out wide again. Bodies in the box. Can we get ahead on it? Towards low. Headed. Over the bar. Come on. It's good football. Just not good enough. Now I'm going to bring on Lyndon Gooch for Jamal Lowe. I think it's only fair to give Gooch a chance. He was great last season. Oh, come on. Well in. Good interception. Can we move away now? Help him out. Huggins. Let's go down the centre. Drift inside. Keep going. I can see Scarlett making a move. He's trying to find Scarlett. It is Scarlett. He hits it. And it's going to go wide. It's kept in. Pull it back. Striking Gooch. And it's been blocked. Jesus Christ. Go on. Help him out. Help him out. Move. Move, Scarlett. There we go. Can he do it again? One more time. On to Greenwood. Can this be the goal? Surely. Greenwood. Finish. It's in. It's 1-0 and it's Greenwood. He finally wins his battle against the Sheffield Wednesday keeper. Get in, lad. What a dream from the academy graduate. Of course, was sold on to Leeds as a youngster. He's come back home. His first game for the club in a competitive scenario. And he's absolutely broke the roof of the net. The stage match roof has come off. And it's 1-0. Get in. Well in, Sam, lad. Well in. Oh, come on, man. They're holding on to the ball for so long. That's what they've been doing all game. They hold on to it for friggin' ages. Not necessarily doing much with it, but you need to really concentrate. Look the way they hold on to it. Oh, no, 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 no. They've got space out wide. Don't let them get it back. That's a brilliant football. Please be offside or something. Save us here. Oh, thank God they've made a right mess of it. Get it away. Get it away. Blow the whistle, ref. Blow the whistle. There we go. It's a brilliant start to our return to the championship. Three points. A hard-fought win. And I tell you what, Greenwood, he looks absolutely brilliant. 1-0. So as you can see, after that game, we are currently in fifth place. Of course, it's only been one game played. And in the top left there, you can see Jam Sarni with a manager rating of 82, which is very, very nice indeed. But that is where the episode is going to be left, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you are happy with the signings we've made. I know there have been quite a lot of youngsters in there. There's quite a lot of free agents, but I have tried to keep it as realistic as possible. But at the same time, try and get a really good, deep squad. That's kind of been the aim. Uh, so then we have two squads, a first and second, that are really, really competitive. That's what I want. But if you have enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button for me. It would be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care. Stay jammy.